Investing in dividends is quite attractive and there are some good reasons for this. You own a part of the right company and this company is paying you even if you don't work for it. But now, as the economy has been basically put on hold, more and more companies are cutting or suspending dividends. This is not a good sign at all, but there are also great opportunities which we will cover in today's video, so make sure to watch it till end, because I am going to show you some very interesting facts. Give this video a thumbs up, so YouTube shows it to others as well and please don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Before we get into our video, here's an interesting fact. If you had invested just $100 in 1940, it would be worth almost $175,000 by the beginning of 2012, assuming you had reinvested those dividends. If you had not reinvested that $100 then it would have made you about $12,000 profit. Let's forget that you know this fact. What are dividends and why are they so attractive? If you have a few bucks, you can invest in a profitable company. It's quite easy too. You buy a share of let's say Ford company and by this you become one of the owners of Ford. Then you sit back and Ford will send you money every three months or every quarter for investing in the company, without ever stepping in one of their factories or working for them. Wow, that's great, you might say, especially if you are new to dividend investing. It actually is a pretty attractive way of investing your money, because those checks you receive every three months mean that you are making a passive income. Passive income is basically a way to make money while you sleep. Of course, if you have more shares in a company, you earn more money, so the more shares you own, the bigger the passive income. So what do you do with the money? Well, you could go out shopping or you can reinvest your dividends to buy back more shares of the company you invested in. This way you are compounding, or simply put, building up your wealth. Before we get to dividends being cut or suspended, there are two important aspects to mention. First, when a company is profitable, it can do three things. Save the cash it has on hand for emergencies, reinvest the money into its own company or give money through dividends to their shareholders or owners. A strong company should do all of the three. Second, if you want to check out which companies pay dividends, you have to go to your stockbroker or a stock news website and search for a company, looking for dividend or forward dividend yield. If there's a number, that's how much that company is going to pay per share. So if it says 3, then you get $3 for owning a share, but if you buy 50 shares for example, then you'll be getting $150 in dividends. One of the wealthiest men ever, John D. Rockefeller said, quote, The only thing that gives me pleasure is to see my dividends coming. Being a dividend investor, he grew a fortune of more than $400 billion in today's money when adjusted for inflation. That's more than the first three richest men have combined today. Wow, it sounds great, you might say, but hold on and stick with me on this one. One of the greatest investors of our times, Warren Buffett recently decided to sell all of his airline stocks. His company owned 11% of Delta, 10% of Southwest Airlines, another 10% of American Airlines and 9% of United Airlines before selling them all. Why should I care about what the richest investor does, you might ask. Well, when one of the most intelligent investors makes a move like this, there must be a good reason for it. It means, he does not have confidence in the airline business, at least for now. With lockdowns all over the world and people not traveling, airline companies have lost a great amount of money and even when the economy reopens, it might take years before people start traveling as much as they used to. There are also a lot of signs showing a sharp economic slowdown. This is why companies are worried about losing money and having less in their bank. So what can they do? When economy is quite in a recession mode, the companies likely to survive will be the ones which have cash saved up. That is why instead of paying out money for its owners, a company would rather keep the money, so they could cut dividends for example. Dozens of major companies have already cut or suspended their dividends and we can expect more companies to do so in the coming months. Shell Oil made its first dividend cut since the Second World War, which is quite staggering. Some other energy companies are still paying dividends, but if the price of oil stays around $20 a barrel for a longer period, they might cut back on, or get rid of dividends. Other affected companies might be those that were hardest hit by this health and financial crisis, tourism-based companies for example. But with every crisis comes opportunity as well. In our case, when investors get worried about dividend cuts, they tend to sell. When many people sell and few buy, the price goes down and so does the price of a company. But history has always showed us, that strong companies manage to recover after a crisis. We've seen this in 2008 as well, when some companies also started cutting their dividends and their prices declined, which made it a bargain to buy shares of those companies. Those who had trust in the company, 
bought their stocks on sale and when the business recovered and the price of its stock went up, some people really became rich. You just have to make sure you invest in a company that is strong, has cash on hand and will be able to survive a crisis. Note that I am not telling you how to invest, so make your own research, because investing, besides opportunities, comes with risks too. Don't forget, that after the 2008 crash it took around 4 years for dividends to return to normal. Also, some economists are predicting that the second quarter of this year is going to contract the US economy by as much as 40% and European economies might be hit even worse. That means the stock market will likely not perform greatly for a while and volatility might be the boss on the market as well. Before we end, let's turn back for a minute to that staggering amount I mentioned in the beginning of this video. If you had invested $100 in 1940, and reinvested dividends, you would have had about $175,000 by the beginning of 2012. If we look back at the S&P 500, reinvested dividends have accounted for over 90% of the index's growth between those years. Even during harsh times, for example the 2008 housing bubble, while dividends per share fell only about 25%, earnings per share fell by more than 90%. There are many examples to support the conclusion, that dividend paying companies always performed better during recessions. Thank you for watching, see you soon and don't forget to subscribe.